orange. And today I'm going to show you how I built this barn door using tongue and groove joiner. Believe it or not, I've been using a pirate flag as a door for the past almost two years due to moving walls, raising ceilings, and all sorts of other fun stuff. But now it was time for a new door. And I didn't want just any old barn door, I wanted something special for this door. After all, it is the entrance to my master suite, and it had big shoes to fill replacing that pirate flag. I joke, I kid. But in all seriousness, I wanted something here that was awesome, and I wanted to try a woodworking technique that I hadn't tried before, tongue and groove joinery. I also wanted this build to be approachable, so I made it from two by six fur boards you can get at any big box store. You just need to make sure that they are dry, moisture content below 10%, and you'll see why later. As you can see, I started by breaking down the boards to their final length, and then milling the boards down to five inches wide. I used my jointer, planer, and table saw to do this. But since this is, we're going for the rustic look on this door, I don't think this step was necessary, but I do suggest ripping the rounded edges off the board to get them to five inches wide. Once that was done, I put my planer away and then I inserted my dado stack into my table saw at one third the thickness of the board, in my case, one half inch, and ripped a dado down the center of each of the styles, the long pieces, at one and a half inches deep. I did run the boards through in both directions to ensure that the dado was directly in the center of the boards. Next up was to cut the tongues on the center rails. So I set up a stop on my miter gauge at one and three eighths inch and my blade height to just a hair past half an inch. Having the depth of the tongue at one and three eighths inches instead of exactly one and a half inches like the groove allows room for any air. It's just a little wiggle room, plus it ensures that the, where the tongue and the groove meet at the shoulders will be flush. Once it was set up, I did a practice cut and then proceeded to cut the tongues on both ends and sides of all the center rails. It was a lot and a lot of cutting. If you're wanting more details and measurements on how I built this door, I have plans and a full write-up on my website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Next, I laid out all the center rails and just kind of arranged them in an order that I thought looked good based on their knots and the grain direction and all that. And then I got them numbered and then it was time to assemble. And I started that by finding the center of the vertical styles and making a mark and lining that mark up with the center of the middle rail and attached it using wood glue and clamping it till it was dry. This is the only board that the tongue will be getting glue. The rest will just have to be able to float in the groove, which will allow for wood movement. Oh, and be sure to check for square, especially when installing this board. Next, I installed the rest of the center rails by sliding them down from the ends. You might need to sand or clean up the tongues on the rails before doing this so that they slide in easier. I did also add a couple of dots of glue to the sides of each of the rail so that they would stick together. This is completely unnecessary. I just thought it might help them move together if there was any wood movement. And as you can see, my tongues were a little tight because I made mine at one and one half inches long, but in the plans I have the recommended one and three eighths, so you don't run into the same issue that I had. But one by one, I got each of them hammered into place and clamped together for a nice snug fit, and then I moved on to the other side. Before you install that last top and bottom center rail, you need to drill an elongated hole on the tongues three quarter inches from the shoulder in the middle. These elongated holes are going to allow wood movement. 
In my haste, in order to get the door assembled, I f completely forgot to do this step. Next up, we needed to pin the middle rail by drilling a 3 8 inch hole in the middle of the style through the groove and the tongue and glued in a 3 8 inch dowel. The middle is the only spot that the glue is going to go all the way through, touching both sides of the groove and the tongue. Then it was time to pin the top and the bottom end boards. We did this by drilling a 3 8 inch hole into the styles in the middle of the bottom and top rails on both sides, 3 quarters of an inch from the shoulder. Mark a line two thirds of the thickness of your door, and in my case, one inches on the dowel. Then add a touch of glue to the bottom side of the hole or just outside of the groove. Hammer your dowel into the line and then add a little bit of glue. And then finish hammering the dowel through until it's flush with the bottom side. Goal is to get glue on the outside of the grooves and not on the tongue. And then just repeat on all four corners. Once the glue is dry, cut the pins flush wood fill any necessary spots, and sand your piece. Now let's give this door some character. I did this by Shoshugi banning it. I burnt it two times and then wire brushed off the burnt soft grain with a wire brush. I did this to highlight the grain and give the door some texture. If you want more information on how to Shoshugi ban a piece, I have plenty of more tutorials on my website or a couple of other YouTube videos with more details. This is one of my favorite parts here where you can really see the texture come to life. Once I got it to where I liked it, I hand sanded any of the wire brush marks out using Diablo's new reusable hand sanding block. This thing is awesome because it has soft foam on one side that's perfect for getting into all these little nooks and crannies that the burning created. But it also has a dense foam side that is great for rounding over edges. Plus it uses Diablo's sand net paper that lasts forever. And when it does run out, just add another sheet on the reusable foam. Thank you Diablo for sponsoring this video. I loved how the door looked at this point, but the color wasn't just quite right to fit my space that it was going in. So I decided to stain this door black and I completely love the outcome. Last step was to install the hardware on the door, get the track hung, and then hang the door. And if you do look closely, like my husband did, you can see that there are a couple of gaps in the door. That's because I made the rookie mistake of starting building this before the wood was completely dry. So with wood burning it and letting it sit in my garage, the wood did shrink. It might swell over time, but I still think it looks great and I'm not too worried about it. Plus it's a huge improvement over the pirate flag. If you enjoyed this project, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more awesome DIY projects. And if you're looking for a barn door that's a little easier to make with less tools, time, and skills, check out my video, How to Make a Barn Door the Easy Way. Until next time, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.